she would have chanted. Um, and I sent it in. I was hoping it was going to be up there, but it's not. <laughs> tell you about it after. <clears throat> yeah, that's the first, but I wanted something else a little special to chant before. Hare Krishna, good morning. <laughs> Nupad Paramahansa Paravajakataria Satara, his divine grace, A. C. Bhakti Vidanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Iskan Bibiti Founder Acharya, his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Grantara Srimad, Sri Shaitanya Shaitamrita Ki Jai, Gora Premanandi, Hari Hari Bo, all glories, all glories, all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the lotus feet of Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. So in 1970, for the San Francisco Rathiatra, which was attended by His Divine Grace, Sriman Mangalananda Prabhu, who was a songwriter, a composer, and a wonderful devotee, he wrote a little um, song we can say like a bhajan in glorification of Lord Chaitanya and Prabhupada told him do this it will be successful they got the blessings of Prabhupada so I was trying to get it up there so that we could sing it 
but I'll say it, I'll repeat, you can repeat, because it's very nice. Lord Chaitanya's moon is rising. No, it's not at all surprising that we're singing in the street, dancing in the street, telling everyone we meet, we're going home. There's a golden moon overhead now. We must serve Chaitanya somehow. He's the golden avatar. Spread the names of Krishna far to every town. To every single town. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Lord Chaitanya's moon is rising. No, it's not at all surprising. That we're singing in the street, dancing in the street, telling everyone we meet, we're going home, we're going home, we're going home. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. <laughs> Mangananda Prabhu Ki Jai. You can look that up and on the Google, and then there's some really wonderful renditions, old, old, old ones, and because it's such a magnetic song, you know, it just ha captures the whole mood. There's some more modern day renditions. So the verse today, Adi Lila 1319, uh, word by word and word by word and translation, sarva, sarva. All. all, sat, sat. Auspicious. auspicious, guna, guna. Qualities. qualities, purnam, Purna. filled with, filled with. Tam. tam, that. Vande, I offer obeisances. Falguna, in the month of Falgun. Purinam, the full moon evening. Yasyam, in which Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Avatirna, Advented, Krishna, Lord Krishna's, Namabi, with the chanting of the holy names, Sarvasadguna Purnam Tvam, Vande Falguna Purnimam, Yasam Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Vatirna Krishna Namabhi. Somebody chant.
Translation by His Divine Grace, Sula Prabhupada. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the full moon evening of the month of Falgoon, an auspicious time full of auspicious symptoms when Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu advented himself with the chanting of the holy name Hare Krishna. You can repeat. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the full moon evening in the month of Falgun, an auspicious time full of auspicious symptoms. When Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu advented himself with the chanting of the holy name, Hare Krishna. Om Magyanta Marundasya Janana Sakalaya Chaktun Militam Yena Tazme Sri Grave Namaha Sri Shaitanya Manu Vistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Padamayam Dadati Swapadanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharane Sunya Sesha Sunya Vadi Satarane Sri Krishna Shaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasadi Gorbhakta Vrinda Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Gaurati Zena Maha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Vansha Kalpa Turuvyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhavya Cha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishna Bhavya Namo Namaha I'm going to warn you by advance. Sometimes I have without any notice, coughing fits. So if it happens, apologies in advance, I have a little lozenger and I'll hope for the best. It may or may not happen. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared on the 23rd of the month of Falgun. That was corresponding to the 18th of February in the year of 1486. And the time of his appearance, it was described that the constellations were perfectly situated, that they had actually aligned themselves. You know, they may have been in one version, but at that time they realigned, you can say, and Mother Earth was experiencing great happiness. And transcendental joy was manifesting in everyone's heart although they didn't even know why. You know. It was due to the Lord's desire that there was a lunar eclipse, and everyone in Navadweep went to bathe in the Ganges and began chanting the Lord's holy name. And it was at this auspicious moment that the Lord chose to appear. You may recall that, you know, generally the child's in the womb for nine months, or they'll say 10. He, hung in there for like 13 months, you know, waiting for this precise, auspicious moment. So during this era, in the background of planet Earth, because we tend to focus on this one area, but there was other things going on on the globe. Um, other events were playing out. Mundane events, Christopher Columbus, he sailed from Spain, he landed in the New World, thus setting the seed for America. 
Henry the Seventh, something in your backyard, he began his reign from August of 85. Married Elizabeth of York, there was a golden coin that was equal to one pound sterling. It was called a sovereign, you know, in his honor. And interestingly, Pope Innocenti of the Eighth condemned witchcraft in 18, like, sorry, 1484. Had a, what's called papal bull, very, very official announcement. And then over on the northern side, in what would later become North and South America, Ahiut Zolti becomes the Aztec ruler in 1486. This was a very, the Aztecs were um, powerful people. And uh, they had an amazing empire for some time. So he became the ruler in 86. And the following year, Ahuit Zoti's new temple at Tenochtitlan was dedicated to the gods in a ceremony that lasted four days. And as many as 20,000 prisoners of war were sacrificed on their altar. It was also the beginning of the African slave trade, of which England was part of that in the beginning. <laughs> England and Portugal kind of led the, led the story. So that was some of the stuff that was, you know, happening. Srila Prabhupada completed the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Gaur Purnim in 1968. So I'll just read the first paragraph and the last paragraph of his preface. Although it's 56 years old now, the message is eternal. The first paragraph reads, Teachings of Lord Chaitanya a treatise on factual spiritual life. And just, just that right there is a powerful statement of what's to come. A treatise on factual spiritual life by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Acharya, International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So this was before Srila Prabhupada was addressed as Prabhupada. And at that time, the headquarters for the International Society for Krishna Consciousness was 61 Second Avenue in New York City. Srila Prabhupada dedicates his offering to the uh, his offering <clears throat> to the sacred service of Srila Bhakti Srila Satchidananda Bhakti Vinod Thakur, who initiated the teachings of Lord Chaitanya in the Western world by sending a small book. The Life and Precepts of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to McGill University in Canada in 1896. Srila Prabhupada writes, The year of my birth, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. Um, that same book was found in the British Museum when we were on Berry Place when the temple, the first temple was in very place. Guru Das found that same little book there. So 1896, a, four, a harbinger of what was to come. This book reaches the West and his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada, took birth. Srila Prabhupada was one time asked, when did you first remember Krishna? This was by during some kind of an interview. When did you first remember Krishna? In a very sober way, he said, September 1st, 1896. So the, they were thinking he didn't understand, so they repeated the question, and he repeated, September 1st, 1896. On another occasion, he goes, I never forgot him. So the preface to this book, Teachings of Lord Chaitanya, was also the preface for Sri Chaitanya Shetamrita, which was written years later. He says, there's no difference between the teachings of Lord Chaitanya presented here and the teachings of Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. The teachings of Lord Chaitanya is a 
practical demonstration. A practical demonstration of the teachings of Lord Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, the last word of the Lord to everyone, surrender unto me, meaning Lord Krishna, surrender unto me. And he would immediately take charge of such a surrendered soul. The Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is already in charge of the maintenance of this creation by his plenary expansion of this Yerodakshayi Vishnu. But Prabhupada explains such maintenance by the Lord is not specific, and therefore the Lord takes charge. So it means he takes charge of the pure devotee. And he describes a pure devotee. A pure devotee is a soul ever surrendered to the Lord. So, ever surrendered to the Lord. Like a child to his parents or an animal to its master. So this surrendering process is manifested in six stages, namely to accept things favorable for discharging devotional service, to reject things unfavorable for discharging devotional service, to firmly believe that the Lord will protect his devotees always, to feel exclusively dependent on the Lord's mercy, and to have no separate interest besides the entrance of the Lord, and to always feel meek and humble. So in the conclusion of the preface, Srila Prabhupada writes, one has to suffer or enjoy the fruits of one's activities, and nobody can check the laws of material nature which govern such things so long as one is engaged in such activities one is sure to be baffled in attempting to achieve the ultimate goal of life. And then he writes, I hope, therefore, most sincerely that by understanding the teachings of Lord Shaitanya, human society will have a new light of spiritual life, opening the field of activities of the pure soul. Om Tat Sat, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, 14th March, 1968, the birthday of Lord Chaitanya. That's Prabhupada described, the birthday of Lord Chaitanya. Sri Sri Radha Krishna Temple, New York, New York. He commented, I'm not exactly releasing this book, but this book will release us from repeated cycle of birth and death. During this time in Amsterdam, the morning program class, the morning class, like we're having morning classes, they had morning class. But since this book came out, their morning class consisted of a one hour reading from the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. There was no explanations or lectures, just reading, reading and hearing. And this book is where Sri Prabhupada explained the most essential teachings from the Sri Chaitanya Shaitamrita. He first begins from a book by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, as aforementioned, Sri Chaitanya, His Life and Precepts, where he gives a summary of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's life. And then he explains Lord Chaitanya's teachings to Rupa Goswami in Prayag, his teachings to Sri Sanatan Goswami in Varnasi, his teachings to Prakasananda Saraswati in Varnasi, his teachings to Sarvabhuma, Bhattacharya, and Jagannath Puri. And he concludes with the conversation between Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Roy on the banks of the Godavari in Rajmundri, or as it was known in those days, Vijay Nagar. And Srila Bhaktivinov Thakur, he was a great lover of Navadip Dham. In the early 70s, Srila Prabhupada had about 50 temples. Anybody have the idea what the number is now? It's like over 600 temples, projects, farm projects. Yeah. So in that time, early 70s, only 50. A beautiful temple in Los Angeles. And then a little later, Aquarius 
इस a skyscraper in new york city <coughs> so then we may wonder why did sri la prabhupad um choose to make the iskon world headquarters in a desolated rice paddy in west bengal there wasn't a decent road to get there except for bengalis hardly anyone on the planet ever heard of mayapur there were some nice little gaudiya mat temples here and there but mostly it was populated by muslims it was isolated even could be a little dangerous around that time shri prabhupad visited gainesville florida i think you've all heard of alachua you know it's like so gainesville is a sister city right next door and actually gainesville was where the, the first um iskon temple started out so he was there in gainesville and he began a lecture by saying i have come to this remote part of the world referring to gainesville florida <laughs> remote part of the world and i'm so far from shri navadweep dam mayapur the birthplace of lord chaitanya because he considered mayapur the center of the spiritual universe so the first gor purnim festival in iskon mayapur was celebrated on shri prabhupada's order in 1972 so just like giriraj swami has recently completed a book i'll build you a temple it's a story of um juhu hari krishna land there's an incredible story which i won't even go near at this point but yeah. the acquisition of that land that land that rice paddy <laughs> in the middle of nowhere and now it belonged to sri la prabhupad iskon and on his order um although not widely attended by international devotees the first festival the first gorn purnim festival was occurring and it set the standard for festivals that became the backbone of the annual vaishnav sanghas and celebrations in mayapur and then followed to vrindavan attracting thousands of devotees i mean i just came from mayapur and vrindavan and my god you could barely walk uh, you know <laughs> and i saw like the uh, prakrama marg today there was a little video of prakrama marg that's in vrindavan and you just see this f- sea of humanity walking on what used to be the soft bridge rudge that does the vrindavan vrindavan but all glories to the government it's now a paved street <laughs> not of the less a sea of him all you could just see was massive amounts of people but it was a humble beginning for us in 72 like about 50 or 60 eager participants and we were thinking that was pretty awesome you know Sri la prabhupad he surprised the devotees by bringing us to this rice paddy field off to the side of a pothole filled road a dirt road without any nearby civilization it was only this like small straw hut that Sri la prabhupad lived in he had a small brass deity sri radha madhava <clears throat> and there were many snakes swimming in the ganges and there were cobras in the field sometimes cobras even came into our buildings when they were first built during the monsoon the ganga would flood sometimes covering everything drinking bathing and cooking water came from this hand pump surrounded by mud due to lack of drainage and the water required boiling to drink electricity had only arrived a few months earlier and it wasn't constant in other words it was off more than it was on and as usual in these early days there was no money 
It was a massive cultural shock. And we were all wondering, what on earth could possibly happen here? I remember getting off the bus after having gone through the whole effort to get there. My husband was already there because he was serving Srila Prabhupada. And I'm just like, I'm sure the others were too, feeling totally bewildered. You, you know, you're, here you are in the holy sacred land of Mahaprabhu. And you're hoping to feel some kind of instant ecstasy, but honestly I was just feeling quite bewildered. <laughs> Although happy to be there, I suppose. You know, we were wondering what could possibly happy happen there, and Srila Prabhupada was confidently explaining, "This will be our world headquarters," and he talked about a temple of Vedic planetarium. He gave a basic design for it. It would be one of the largest temples in Asia. And he talked about tens of thousands of devotees coming from every part of the world living there when at the time only a few handful of devotees were living there, struggling with malaria, typhoid, boils, dysenter boils, dysentery, and our minds, just trying to get some rice to offer to the deities and eat. Srila Prabhupada had, had full faith in the words of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Long before, when Thakur Bhaktivinoda lived across the river, from Mayapur and Godrum, he had a vision. He had a vision of a glorious temple where devotees, Vaishnavas from America, from Europe, from Russia, from India, from England, from, from all over the world, would gather as brothers and sisters, dancing together, chanting the holy names of Krishna. He said, when, when, oh, when will that day come? So Srila Prabhupada had invited devotees to attend the first Mayapur Purnim festival. But as mentioned, there weren't that many of us, and yet it seemed like a huge crowd to us. There was no developed place for us to sleep. We were sleeping on straw in leaky tents, eating very little. We were having kirtans, devotees cooked in the field, and Srila Prabhupada was lecturing. But still, no one could understand what was going to possibly come out of this place. It was so much trouble just to get there. You had to take a train to crowded Howrah Station in Calcutta. Somehow you had to get through that station to take a local train, sharing it with goats and chickens. Shishi ki jai, gor nitai ki jai. Sitaram Lakshman Hanuman Ki Jai. Take the local train, you shared it with goats, chickens, and people. You took that train to Krishna Nagar. And then you could take a boat across the river and walk for miles or wait for the occasional local baths to take you to a rice paddy where there was a straw hut and a small construction site in the background. This was our ISKCON world headquarters site, and it was our festival site. But still, overall, the devotees were blissful. We didn't see through our eyes. We, we understand that when one's eyes our premanjana charita bhakti vilao chotena, until our eyes would be decorated with the salve of pure love, we just saw the external appearance of things. But Srila Prabhupada was teaching us how to see through our ears, to see with faith in the words of Sadhu Guru and Shastra. Then we could possibly see as it is. Srila Prabhupada was so enthusiastic. We have this land. It's in the heart of the spiritual world, the holiest of all holy places, none different from Vrindavan. And when he spoke with such exuberance about Mayapur, how it would manifest, we became equally enlivened on the basis of our faith in the impossible. 
much the same as when we came from UK, from USA to UK. Faith in the impossible, that we were gonna meet the Beatles and they were gonna chant Hare Krishna and the whole world would hear the holy name. What were the odds? What were the chances? Yet it happened. So here is Prabhupada. We have this land. It's the heart of the spiritual world, the holiest of all holy places. The teachings of Lord Chaitanya was a summary of the Shaitanya Shaitarmitra. And as he was translating Srimad Bhagavatam, already having completed Sri Sapanishad, Bhagavad Gita, as it is, the nectar of devotion, our foundational books, he simultaneously decided. I must give my students the Sri Shaitanya Shaitarmita so they can present it to the world. This year, I'm sure you all know this, this year is the marathon year of worldwide distribution of the Shaitanya Shaitarmita. Every temple, everywhere, the focus of book distribution is on the Shaitanya Shaitarmita. You know. As the devotees would sleep, he would be translating and writing the purports. And of course, there's that famous story when he told Rameshwar Prabhu, I want this complete in two months for publication. Two months. So many volumes. And the BBT leader says, Srila Prabhupada, that's impossible. There's more than 10 times that we've ever done. And Prabhupada replied with the famous zinger, impossible is a world word in the fool's dictionary. Does anybody know the source of that statement? Actually, Napoleon Bonaparte, you know, the French, little French guy. <laughs> Came from him. I was trying to kind of find out the circumstances behind that, but I didn't have enough time. But you know, Prabhupada was so amazing how widely learned he actually was. Sometimes he would quote, you know, some like Longfellow or some famous former poet. Here he was qu quoting Napoleon Bonaparte. So the Sri Chaitanya Shetaramita consists of a total of, anybody know how many verses? 11,519 verses. <laughs> and 851 of these verses are drawn from 53 other scriptures. You know, sometimes it's, you know, this is from, this is from, this is from. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu prophesied. I mean, it's a prophecy, but it's coming from Mahaprabhu, who's Krishna, so in one way, it's more like a statement of fact. But he said that in every town and village, we know this very well, every town and village, the names of Krishna will be chanted. And Nityananda Prabhu saw Lord Chaitanya in a village near Puri, getting thousands of people to participate in kirtan. And Nityananda Prabhu, he made the same prediction, that in every town and village, the holy names will be chanted. So in that face, fateful first meeting in the year of 1922, when our Srila Prabhupada first met Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, he received his life mission. You are an intelligent young man. Take the message of Lord Chaitanya to the Western world, preaching in English. After Srila Prabhupada got his ticket on the Jaladuta from Sumati Moraji, that was in Bombay. He took a train, which was about a 48 hour ride and probably third class from Bombay to Calcutta. And then he went to Mayapur to receive the blessings of his Guru Maharaj at his Samadhi Mandir and receive the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda to take this message to the West. He stopped in Shantipur, the very place where Dwaita Acharya was praying and did kirtan and puja to bring Krishna down to this world to establish the Sankirtan movement. Dwaita Acharya was the leader 
of the Brahmins, and he also had a house on the bank of the Ganges. A small group of devotees would meet in Navadweep, and they'd hold kirtan and invoke Harikatha. Why was Sri Advaita Acharya in distress while simultaneously experiencing the highest pleasure of love of God? Because that's the nature of pure love. That one who knows, one who has Krishna Prem in this world feels great distress to see anyone without that prema, paradukaduki. He made a vow. I will bring Krishna to this world because no one else can deliver these souls except Krishna. Srila Prabhupada used to chant in this very same small temple as a grihastha. And now he had returned as a sannyasi with a mission. He sent, as he used to, in the rear of the temple, intensely chanting. And the pujari noticed this was the same person who formerly came as a grihastha to chant because he would notice him due to the intensity of his chanting. The dress has changed, but his intense chanting had not. Srila Prabhupada asked his humble pujari to bless him because his spiritual master had given him an impossible service to travel to America bringing the message of Radha and Krishna where they were suffering due to the lack of knowledge about them. Years later, the same Pujari was given a Back to Godhead magazine and looking on the cover and seeing, you know, you have that little, two little circles. <laughs> he saw that that same sannyasi had succeeded. Hmm. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't just give love for Krishna. At Prayag, Rupa Goswami prayed, Namo Mahavadandaya Krishna Prema Pradayatai Krishnaya Krishna Shaitanya Namani Gora Chizayi Maha. You are Krishna, but you're even more munificent, more merciful than Krishna. How can Krishna be more merciful than Krishna? Because Krishna, who is the original Krishna Sdo Bhagavan Swayam, the original source of all incarnations, the Brahma Jyoti, the infinite. What is everybody getting? Huh? Oh, <laughs> I was thinking something very, oh yeah, very special. Maha flowers is going up. <laughs> so. <clears throat> So how can Krishna be more merciful than Krishna? Because Krishna, who is the original Krishna Stu Bhagavan Swayam, the original source of all incarnations, the Brahma Jyoti, the source of infinite limitless Brahman, which the jnana yogis hanker for birth after birth, trying to attain liberation by entering into the Brahman, which is just the halo of a fulgent body of Krishna. Brahmanohi Pratishtaham and the Paramatma, who is situated in every living entity's heart, is the plenary portion expansion of Krishna. Govindamani Purusham the source of everything that exists, and then the highest revelation, as Brahmananda Roy and Lord Chaitanya discussed, when love meets its culmination, its fullest perfection of Vrindavan, Madhurya Dham. When Krishna came to the world approximately 5,000 years ago, he performed his beautiful Braj pastimes, which Bhagavatam explains culminates in Rasalila, Krishna's unlimited love for Sri Radha and Sri Radha's unlimited love for Krishna. That love is the origin of all love. That was expressed to us in San Francisco on January 17th of 1967 when Prabhupada bravely took a plane, his first plane ride ever from New York City to San Francisco. And our little, small, you could probably put that temple room about maybe one, two, three or four times into this grand temple room. 
we would always say the room was packed. Of course it was packed. <laughs> they were <laughs> fairly small, but it was packed, this first visit. And he's looking out over all these interesting looking people, some in suit and ties, some kind of casual, and then there was a lot of hippies who liked to express themselves as dressing up like former, face, former famous personalities, like Jesus Christ, who a lot of <laughs> Cleopatra, Geronimo, who was a very amazing Apache Indian. And then the hippies, you know, our mantra, the mantra of the hippies was, peace and love, brother, peace and love, sister. And Prabhupada bravely told everyone there is no love in the material world. That could have been what we would describe a real downer, meaning, you know, kind of unpalatable news. But then he began to explain the nature and the source of real love, Lord Krishna. <laughs> and as he was explaining that to us, we were feeling from him this amazing feeling of love that we had never felt before in our entire lives, not even from our parents. And we found ourselves falling in love with him. <laughs> so Sukadeva Goswami explained in the Bhagavatam that the beautiful Vrindavan pastimes are an ex exclusive place for those who have completely surrendered to Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna begins his basic teachings with, we're not this body. Arjuna, why are you so much confused? And he culminates in Sarvadharma Paritaja, you know, abandon all varieties of religion, of dharma, just surrender unto me. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna, Radha Bhava Dhyuti Subalitam, Nome Krishna Swarupam, who comes to taste the sweetness of Sri Radha's love and distribute the love of Vrindavan, Sri Radha's love. Lord Chaitanya is Krishna in the form of a devotee. And he teaches us by his example and the example of his devotees how to surrender to Krishna. Giving the fallen Kali Yuga souls the opportunity to enter into the spiritual realm, realm of Sri Vrindavan Dham. So Sri Advaita had read from the Gotamya Tantra that anyone who worships Vishnu with Ganga water and Tulsi leaf will have their wishes fulfilled. So on the bank of the Ganga, he worshiped his Salagram Shila, offering Tulsi leaves, Ganga water, crying loudly, roaring, constantly fasting, chanting the names of the Lord. And his prayers reached the heart of Sri Krishna. And simultaneously, Srila Haridas Thakur, classified by the current society as a time, as an untouchable, was in his cave on the riverbank chanting 300,000 names every day, praying for Krishna to appear. Wherever Haridas went, he was persecuted, he was rejected, he was criticized, his life was in danger. People were trying to destroy him. The Muslims hated him because he was a Muslim and he was chanting Krishna's names. And the Hindu so-called Brahmins, they hated him because he was coming from an untouchable caste and he was chanting the Maha Mantra. When he came to Shantipur, Sri Advaita Prabhu embraced Haridas, the highest of the Brahmins, and a persecuted, untouchable person loved and respected each other as equals, due to their love of Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada went to Shantipur. He stopped there to receive the blessings of Sri Advaita. So many times Mahaprabhu have said, I have only come here because Advaita Prabhu had called me. So today there are thousands of devotees living where those rice paddies were. It's actually almost shocking. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a transcendental ghetto. 
skyscraper buildings. <laughs> it's unbelievable. But they're living where the rice paddies were, where the little straw hut where Prabhupada lived and gave his vision. Thousands of devotees from all nationalities living there, and the temple of Vedic planetarium is being completed. It's a miracle of love. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur saw it in a vision, and his son Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati gave the order to carry out that vision to our Srila Prabhupada. And thus we sit together now. His compassion was our only qualification to receive the supreme mercy of Shaitanya Mahaprabhu. There was a great devotee, Jayananda Prabhu. I think most of you must have heard of Jayananda Prabhu. One time the devotees were having a little gathering together and they'd come together in a bus with Srila Prabhupada and we're sitting in this room and Prabhupada's looking around and goes, Everyone was there, but he didn't see Jayananda. Where is Jayananda? And they said, he's still parking the van. So Srila Prabhupada waited until Jayananda walked in and he looked at him and he smiled and he said, oh, Jayananda looks just like Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> and Jayananda was blushing. You know what it means to blush? You get red in the face and he was getting redder and redder because he was such a shy and humble devotee. Oh, this divine grace, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. And the coming birthday of Lord Chaitanya Ki Jai. <laughs> Lord Bhaktivinoda Ki Jai. In his Navadip Dham Mahatmya, Lord Bhaktivinoda Thakur gives wonderful realizations and historical stories leading to Shaitanya Mahaprabhu's advent. And Nityananda Prabhu is speaking to Jiva Goswami and he's revealing the highest truth of who Lord Chaitanya really is, you know. So. We could actually dedicate an entire year speaking about the glories of Lord Chaitanya as enunciated in the Shri Chaitanya Shaitarmitra. I mean, an entire, entire year, probably our entire lives. <laughs> anyway, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Have any particular comments or any realizations or some memories that you would like to share? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you so much for sharing such nice memories of Srila Prabhupada. Um, one thing that comes to mind, often I, we hear these stories and when you're describing how you're in this, this paddy field, <laughs> but yet you have faith in Srila Prabhupada that you can see through your ears. And often I think, well, okay, that was back then. Where now, somewhere the magic is lost. But the magic isn't lost, but how can we still have that that mood that you had back then. <laughs> yeah, that is a reoccurring question. And I think you have to work for it. It's there. Just like a moment ago, the curtains were closed. Did that may mean Gokulananda had disappeared? So we can tell, you know, Gokulananda's there. He looks like this, he looks like that, but we're just seeing curtains. Then the curtains open, and are we still seeing Goku? Okay, we see the deity, but are we actually seeing Goku and Nanda in action? Because it's Krishna. He, you know, he may look like he's standing there, but he's actually quite active. <laughs> oh. When oh when will that day be mine? When my eyes are seeing the Lord as he is face to face and interact like Prabhupada would talk to the deities. There was one wonderful story. It was devotees came in, a few devotees, and they came in the temple, and Prabhupada was standing in front of the deities with folded hands, and he was speaking. And then he would stop. 
And then he would reply. Krishna was talking to him and he was having this conversation. They couldn't hear Krishna, but obviously Srila Prabhupada could and did. You know. So when, oh, when will that day be mine? <laughs> we have to work for it. It's not going to fall in our laps. <laughs> but the basis is our desire for that. And we get kind of confused. I was telling someone yesterday how I was in Jaipur. Jaipur is the home of my yesterday, Shishi Radha Govinda. Just beautiful deities. And I came early for a darshan. If you've ever been there, you know it gets packed and you can, so I got there a little early so I would have an optimal position and wouldn't get too crushed in the crowd. And a, a young lady, a young Rajasthani lady came, really sweet looking young lady, and she had a beautiful little baby on her shoulder. So we're both waiting there for the curtains to open, and when they did, of course, everybody comes forward, but we were right there. And she's looking at Govinda, and she's looking at her baby, and she's looking at Govinda. And I, and I was thinking, yeah, that's our problem, you know. Go Vinda, there you go. But you know, uh, I'm not saying the by the baby was Maya. I'm just saying the distraction. Here is Krishna, and you know, so so we have that problem. <laughs> we want Krishna, but oh, there's a few other little things we'd kind of like to have. Oh, okay, I'll get them. I'll give them to Krishna. But actually, you know, when you do like that, I want this, so I'll get it and I'll give it to Krishna. It's not exactly pure. Prabhupada explained that when you do something that you want to do for Krishna, that's not pure service. It's good, it's a start. But pure service is when you do what Krishna wants you to do. And that takes some deep consideration and commitment. So we have some work to do. That shouldn't be discouraging. You know, and actually, we've got a good blueprint of life set out in front of us. Yeah. Bhagavatam is a b blueprint for life. Here, do this, do this. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking us to another weep. And at that time, when when um, when Srila Prabhupada saw all of that, and um, that didn't exist at that time, I was just wondering um, that our basics in Krishna consciousness is the chanting of the holy name. Um, what kept you inspired for all of these years um, to uh, chant the holy name? Um, constantly, I mean, to carry on with your sadhana bhakti. You're asking me? Yes. To share with us. Well, just like that Rajasthani lady was getting confused, I, I went through my confusion also. But Krishna was so kind, he sent Maya to beat me up. <laughs> Kick me around a bit. And Sometimes that's what it takes, not the highest level, but, you know, whatever it takes to get to that point, Krishna, I'm not there yet, but I'm not going to, you know. It's a personal thing, you know. But you have to stick to it, that's it, just stick to it. Don't fall for the trap of maya called discouragement. Anybody ever felt discouraged? Yeah. yeah. Well, you have to know, that's an invitation from Maya. So, you know, don't fall into that trap. You know, soldier on, as they say. Prabhupada, in one purport, which, I'm sorry, I don't remember which, it's one of the earlier volumes of the Bhagavatam, he said, we should re think back or remember where we came from. That way you can appreciate, even if we're not highly, highly advanced, still we're 
know, taken some steps. Think of where you were. What gutter were you lying in? You know, look at where we are now. It's hopeful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Snow. Had a had an operation a few years ago. Had an operation a few years ago. And when I got back from the hospital, I was completely out of it. They gave me all this morphine. You know? So uh, the only thing I could do was watch. Uh, I just kept watching this video. Uh, Lord Chaitanya's moon is rising. Oh yeah. When I was lying on my. Are bed. you a STEM professional? So we, I thought we could looking watch it. We could all watch it together quickly. It's only two minutes. <laughs> okay. Just finish the advert. Just one sec, speaking of operations. Um, Shilavati Devi Dasi, who was personally taught by Srila Prabhupada how to worship the deities. So she's an elderly devotee, 92 years old. And a couple, a couple days ago, maybe three days ago now, she fell and broke her hip. So Gopalasha Priya, who was recently visiting here, is her caretaker. And uh, we determined that with the doctor's advice, against an operation. It would actually be dangerous at this age, her age. But she was very dear to Prabhupada. So I'm just requesting your prayers that whatever Krishna's plan is for her, that she's able to remember Krishna. Gopa was chanting. And even though she was heavily sedated, sedated she started chanting and raised her arm. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. So I request your prayers. <laughs>
الشرط اللي موتنا الجوع